Do you ever work on an audit and you're not sure what to do or maybe when to do it? And then sometimes you might wonder, how much of this do I need to perform? In this video, we're taking a look at test of details as a response to risk assessment. And when we're done, you'll know what to do, when to do it, and how much. So stick with us. In the last 22 videos, I've shown you how to perform risk assessment. Now it's time to decide about what audit procedures need to be performed in response to the risk that you've identified. There are three options in responding to risk, and test of details is one of those. The second one is substantive analytics, and the third is test of controls. In this video, we're highlighting the test of details, and it's the one that you're most familiar with. It's the one, it's the option that you most often choose. And you'll see why in just a moment as we take a look at chapter 19, Test of Details. So here we are in chapter 19, Test of Details. As we get into this chapter, I encourage you to take your copy of my book, Audit Risk Assessment Made Easy, and follow along. But in this chapter, I'm going to talk about the definition of test of details. So what is a test of details? And then we're going to look at the what, when, and how much uh, questions that I alluded to earlier. So here we go, test of details. How do we define it? Well, funny but the audit standards don't really give us a definition. So what I'm going to do is provide you with some examples of what a test of details might look like, and these are very familiar to you if you've done any auditing at all. So here's some examples. Vouching payable invoices. So when you do that search for unrecorded liabilities, you're doing a test of detail. How about tracing the bills, receivables, that were sent to customers? Another option here is testing bank reconciliations. And then the final example is agreeing receivables to contracts. So when you're vouching uh, invoices or you're tracing transactions, when you're testing these bank reconciliations, when you're looking at details, that's a test of details. The most common option to respond to risk is this one, the test of details. And you can tell by these examples, these are the types of procedures you most commonly perform. Now, when you think about tested details, understand that if you have any significant risk, those areas must be addressed with a test of details. But if you have a significant risk area, and those are usually places where you have extremely high inherent risk, such as a complex estimate, so if you have a significant risk, then you must plan and perform a test of details procedure in relation to that risk. Now, I said we talk about the what, when, and the how much question. So we see this defined in the audit standards as nature, timing, and extent. And again, that's the what, when, and degree, or how much you need to perform. So as you're thinking about a response to a risk, say uh, your cash balance, if you think about how could cash be misstated, then it could be misstated intentionally if they're trying to commit fraud, or maybe there's an error in cash so in response to that risk, we're going to look at the bank reconciliation. That would be the nature of the procedure we're going to perform. So here's the nature 
and another example of uh, responding with a specific procedure would be at the bottom you see the risk there is that receivables are overstated. So what can we do to ensure that receivables are not overstated? Our response would, would be to send confirmations to the customers. So you can see here an example of the nature of your audit procedure and you see in the middle of the slide, I say there that risk drives the response. So look at what your risk is. In this example, it's that the receivables might be overstated. And then based on that risk, develop your response or your tested details procedure in accordance with that risk. So here we're going to send confirmations. Another response here might be looking at subsequent receipts for those receivables. And that also is a test of details. In terms of timing, the second issue here for the test of details, sometimes we wonder, well, when should I perform this particular audit procedure? With bank reconciliations, uh, it's pretty obvious you can't look at the bank reconciliation until after it's created. So if you have a calendar year client, you're not going to be able to test or do the test of details before that bank reconciliation is created, which is probably the first or second week of January of the subsequent year. So in, this, in that situation, you could not do interim procedures, say in October or November, for that type of uh, test of details. But there are other test of details that you could perform, say in October or November for a calendar year client, and, and there's substantive test of details, but you only want to do that, notice at the bottom of the slide there, if the entity has, sound, has a sound accounting system. If they've got an accounting system that's not reliable, then you probably don't want to do interim procedures or early procedures you want to wait till you get through the end of the year, and then more than likely you're going to do all of your tested detail procedures after December 30, 31 in this example. So if you have a client, conversely, where they really have great accounting uh, procedures and controls, then think about whether or not you could perform a test of details early, like in October or November. And then finally, number three, the extent of the test of details. So how much do you need to do? I give the example here in a search for unrecorded liabilities. Let's say that you normally use a $20,000 threshold in your search for unrecorded liabilities. Well, let's say that the client in the last year or two, they haven't recorded their payables uh, in, in an appropriate manner. In other words, they've been understated. And you've seen this. You can tell uh, the bookkeeper that's performing that part of the company's uh, records, they're not doing what they need to do. So there's a higher risk of misstatement, and therefore you're going to lower that threshold, say from twenty thousand down to ten thousand or maybe five thousand, and then you're looking at all of the subsequent payments after December thirty one for a calendar year client. You're looking at all the subsequent payments that are say greater than five thousand versus twenty thousand. So you're looking at more uh, information. The extent of the work you're doing is going up. 
So you do more as your risk goes up. So those are the three uh, areas you need to think about in relation to tested details. So in summary, we've said that there is no technical definition of attested details in the audit standards, but some of the examples would be vouching invoices, tracing customer bills, sending bank confirmations, looking at subsequent receipts for receivables, or maybe sending a confirmation on the amount of debt that your client has. So while we don't have a definition, it's pretty obvious a test of details is where you look at, yeah, details. Now, in the following videos, we're going to, to compare this response to substantive analytics and tested controls. And by the time we get done with those two videos, you'll have a good idea, a good understanding of the three responses to the risk of material misstatement. Also, the other thing I wanted to say in summary here is think about what you need to do, what's the response to the risk, then when you need to perform it, and then how much you need to look at. So I hope that helps you understand a test of details. Stay with me in the next video. We're going to take a look at substantive analytics. Until then, take care and have a great day. Bye now.